transforming MJ's mink coat into a teddy bear. Let me first start off apologizing for my voice. I'm just recovering from COVID, so it's a little bit uh, nasally and squeaky. Sorry! So this video is going to be focusing on making the teddy bear. And I used the coat for both the throw and the teddy. I used the lining for the foot pads and the inside of the ears. The bottom of the coat and the top of the coat was a longer fur. I used that on the outside of the bear. Here are the templates that I used, and I have a separate video on how to use a paper, uh, freezer paper templates. I laid the fur out. I transferred everything onto muslin. I put the muslin on the fur and then I cut out each individual piece. So this is what the front of the bear will eventually look like. The first part I'm going to be working with is the head and this is the face part where I've clipped it together and I'm going to bring it to my fur machine. So I've already got the two side pieces together as well as the forehead. I've already placed the eyes in which can be one of the most difficult parts is putting the eyes in, making sure that you get them in the right spot. And then the next portion that we're going to work on are the ears. Once they're put together and clipped together, I bring them over to the fur machine and I am doing an overlock stitch on the edge. After I do this, I'm also going to bring it to my domestic machine and do a straight stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now that the ears are sewn, they're sewn all the way around. There's that quarter inch seam line. Turn them inside out and poke them all the way around. Make sure that they are round. Here I'm working again on the side of the head as well as the back of the head, clipping all the pieces together. You can see that nice seam line there. Everything is very, very neat, especially when you sew it on the fur machine, and then follow up with a nice straight edge. Working on that fur machine, it really makes the edge just nice and smooth. But because I'm going to be stuffing it, I really want to make sure that it's going to be a strong hold. So the edge looks perfect, but I want to reinforce those stitches. This is when I use my domestic machine. I go about a quarter of an inch in and sew along the edge. Now that the head is together, I'm putting all the pieces together. The back, um, matching up the seam allowances and the seams themselves. Tucking in the fur, really important that you do that. And there you can see his little eyes. I also have a couple of pins in there and that's because I pin the ears in because I don't want the pins, I mean the ears to shift when I'm going to sew them. And here I'm pointing out the little pins. So 
So I am coming to the fur machine. Now I have to be really careful because sometimes the, the fur machine can be a little finicky with certain spots. So I stopped right there and I moved past the pins and I continued. I'm going to fix those on the domestic machine. I don't want to do too much thickness uh, with the fur machine because what it will do will it will break the needle. I don't want to break the needles. They're expensive. All right, so now I'm going to attach the ears with the domestic machine. And it's really important that you check to see that the whole ear is actually inside the seam because sometimes even with the pins, it could shift. So here I'm checking to make sure that they were correct. Now I'm working on the tummy area. This is going to be a 12 inch bear, so it is kind of big and it needed a lot of fur. So when you do a project like this, it's going to take away from the size of the throw. So customers always know that the throw will not be as large because I need the pieces to make the bear. So customers have a choice of whether they want a 12, an eight or a six inch bear. And like a six inch bear is probably about a beanie baby size bear. So here the tummy is done. And now I'm adding the side pieces. This is one of the feet. That's the inner portion of the legs. And I know that because the length of the fur is much shorter there. I use the shorter fur on the inside uh, portions of the arms and legs and the unsheared fur on the outside arms and legs. I also use the sheared, I mean the unsheared fur on the belly area and parts of the head. So here I'm attaching the body sides, the belly and the back all together. And I'm also positioning the legs together. So we're attaching the inside of the legs to the outside of the legs. Really important to match up all the seams. You got to follow the pattern. The patterns that I use are, fun are made by Funky Friends Factory and they are really well done. The markings of how to uh, attach all the pieces is very well drawn out and drafted. Not all patterns are made the same. Some of them are very, very difficult to even transfer to a real fur. These are, are really great. So here are the leg pieces. And now I'm adding the foot pads and the foot pads were made from the lining. And the foot pads are going to be a little bit difficult to do. I am going to sew them on the fur machine, but I'm also going to sew them on the domestic machine because um, there's going to be a lot of pressure that's going to be put on those foot pads when I go to stuff it. And I don't want any of it to break loose. So the fur here is actually also being supported by the muslin. When I attach the pieces together, I usually use just a water-soluble glue stick when I put the muslin down on the fur. And it doesn't affect the sewing machine at all. So here I'm using the fur machine going around the edge. And as careful as I'm being, you still kind of miss little pieces here and there and that's why it's really important 
to bring it to that other machine, that domestic machine, the straight stitch machine, and stitch it out there. And so now that the fit, uh, the foot pads are all done, I'm going to turn the bear inside out, and then I start working on the arms. I'm going to match up the letters making sure that I put them in the correct spots. I always have my instructions next to me so I don't make a mistake. I don't want to make a mistake with the fur pieces because I don't want to lose or waste anything because I want to maximize the size of the throw as well. So here I'm attaching the outside and the inside portion of the arms together. And again, in between each, I'll go to the fur machine, then I hop back and forth between that and the domestic. I love using these clips because they're easy to put on and off. They really don't interfere with the fur machine um, because I take them off long before it gets anywhere near the wheels or the needle and I save a lot of finger pricks because when I used to use pins I would just stab myself constantly. So here's the last part. Um, with this part you have to put the head inside the body and because it's such a difficult place to sew I wasn't even going to attempt it on the fur machine because it would have been too thick because some places have two layers of fur and some have three so I hand stitched the head to the body and yep I have a lot of paraphernalia on my fingers um, I'm using a leather needle those leather needles are sharp they have a triangular point on them um, the furrier's needle and I want to make sure that I'm not going to end up stabbing myself and bleeding all over the uh, the fur. There's the head, and that's what it looked like altogether. I didn't film the stuffing of it because actually I forgot. So the collar there is from the lining as well as the foot pads, and the insides of the ears are all from the lining. One of the difficult things about making these bears is sculpting the face as well. You start out with a very fuzzy bear and you try to make it as realistic as you can without making it look too real. So I think his little face came out pretty nice. And again, if you pay attention or see it, you'll see the longer hair. That's the unsheared mink. I hope you enjoyed watching the steps that it takes to make one of these teddy bears. And this video is not quite 15 minutes, but it certainly takes a lot longer than 15 minutes to make one of these bears. But they are absolutely beautiful when they are completed. They are fun to make as well. Come visit us at DynasQuilts.com.